All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday night wine and dine show the funnest night of the week. We have a blast this week. Um, I am blessed tonight to stand in for my dear sister and our compliance officer, Daniel Rickard, who is still out there on the, uh, the, the Gulf or the Pacific Coast because Peter and everybody, they all just got back from uh, sampling the wines to make sure they're ready and go in the bottles and deliver that greatness to you guys. So I'm blessed to step in and I'm also honored to introduce the uh, the co-host for tonight, who's got a great team of people that's going to cook for you. She lives here in a great state of Florida with me, um, so she gets bonus points just for that. Um, and we've already we already have at least one day where we're going to have lunch sometime this summer uh, and see something. But every time I talk to her, I get filled with energy because she's so vibrant, she's so energetic, she's got that smile on all the time. She's got passion for what we do, and guess what? She loves wine. She loves wine ambassador, and. So my, my pleasure to introduce one of our MSIs and leaders in wine ambassador, Miss Sherry Lacey Hayes. Hi there. Hi there. Well, welcome. I'm so glad you guys could show up tonight. And we always start our um, hour with a toast. So um, I forgot which one of you is going to do. Niles, are you going to do the honors? I guess I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, um, you guys, we are, we are building something incredible here, and it's because of that guy you see. Well, I see him on the top right hand corner. I don't know where you see him on your screen. Um, we've got some unbelievable wine experts, wine lovers, IT people, marketing pros behind a fantastic company called Wine Ambassador. These guys have, have, this, have figured out how to take a simple wine in the month club idea and turn it into an incredible business that we get to expand all over the globe. So, to Peter, and Roy and Tanya, who can't be with us tonight, and Brett Hudson, um, here's to a fantastic future, and congratulations on everything you've done so far. Cheers. 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 Mm. Nice. And that Tanya Rose, you're right, is like candy. Oh, candy. Mm. <laughs> so what you got going on tonight, Sherry? Well, tonight we're starting with Sharon Wallace. She has prepared a wonderful appetizer for us. So we're gonna start there and just take it away, Sharon. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yay, okay. Um, I am doing a pineapple salsa because um, it's getting to be summertime. We're starting to get into the warm buns and we all, well, I love salsa and I was looking for something a little bit different and I came across this recipe. I'm gonna let you know, I've already cheated. I've already had this over salmon tonight Ooh. along with some homemade tortillas and a salad and it mm. was all it was good so um yeah it's it's good all right and the neat thing about this recipe is it's real easy it's real quick you make it the day before and it goes with fish chicken pork uh lamb burgers by itself with tortilla chips it goes heck, heck i was eating it on bread okay um this thing goes with everything so i'm going to start and um i even took some um tor regular tortillas and i've torn them up here and i'm going to toss them into the oven to bake so that we have fresh uh tortilla chips to dip cool. it with mm. so that's cool. really easy to do so if you have um some tortillas that you find in your refrigerator that you forgot you had when you were having taco tuesday okay real easy way to salvage them and have homemade fresh tortilla chips. So to go with our wonderful food. Sharon. What wine are you pairing with that delicious we are appetizer? The Tanya, John, maybe it. <laughs> <laughs> Got my technical, you know, cameraman here. Um, we are having the Tanya Pinot Grigio. Yes, mm. yes. Because I, again, this wine goes with everything that I have already named tonight. This wine is just a wonderful, wonderful wine. It goes with appetizers, entrees, desserts. It's just, again, a light, refreshing wine that pairs well with, I can't think of anything it doesn't pair well with. So this is just something that you just keep on eating as long as you can and enjoy. Awesome. Peter, what do you think about that choice? Oh, it's a terrific choice, especially with something like pineapple salsa with the spiciness and, and acidity and fruitiness of it. Um, 
a, a heavier wine would just get lot would they would get clobbered by it. You need something bright and crisp and acidic, and that's where that ten year, the Pinot Grigio is a wonderful choice. And yeah, and I love I love making you know I love your examples of what to do with the with the salsa on on pork chops or on salmon. It's just, it's incredible. Um, so let's hear it. so tell me what you do because i made other salsas but i haven't made a pineapple one in a long time i want to hear how you do it it's real easy you can use fresh pineapple you can even use canned pineapple with this just if you're going to use the canned pineapple i recommend you drain off a little bit of the juice in the can so that your sauce is not too wet um but but you want to keep some of the canned juice just so because you don't want to lose some of the the sweetness um but you, you take a uh, you take a, a half the recipe last night, so you know they have the magical before and after. So <laughs> <laughs> but this is about a 20 ounce can, so two cans would be about 40 ounces or small pineapple if you're doing it fresh. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that you can do is you, and it's artistic and it's beyond my expertise, but I have known people to do this. They will have out the pineapple and then serve this salsa in the pineapple. Again, that's oh. a little for me. Oh, if y'all yeah. can do that, good speed to you. Me, I like bowls, okay? Because <laughs> oh, me, me too, Sharon. I don't get that fancy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you dump it in, and then it's one small red pepper. Um, again, I, I had my husband. I had my sous chef. My husband last night. He chopped all this up for me. Um, so uh, and you, yay, again, John. Yeah, it, it's uh, so it's a small red pepper. A small green pepper. Now, if you like it a little spicy, you can add jalapenos. You can add ch chilies. Uh, it's this the wonderful thing about pineapple salsas is you can make it as sweet or as spicy as you want to. This recipe, to me, um, I'm not a big fan of spicy, but I like flavor. And the red pepper, the green pepper, and this uh, other ingredient that I'm adding, which is red onions gave it a lot of flavor without being either too sweet or too spicy. That's a quarter cup. Yeah, this is a quarter cup. And yeah, it's a small pineapple, a small red pepper, a small green pepper. For the full recipe, it's a half cup of red onion. And now for the next thing, again, it goes to taste. It's a half cup. Sorry. Yeah, half cup of cilantro. Now, some people don't like the taste of cilantro. My daughter is one of them. You can substitute parsley for those who don't like cilantro because that is for some people an acquired taste. We had the one we had tonight with the, was made with parsley and it was excellent. It still had all the acidity. It still had all the flavor. It just didn't have the slight kick that cilantro likes to give. Now, this one I'm making with cilantro because I like cilantro. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, the other things that you're going to add, on my teaspoon here, is you're going to add a half teaspoon of ground cumin. And of course, ground what? What was it? Cumin. Cumin. Oh. C-U-M-I-N. Got it. I know I pronounce things a little different than others, so <laughs> bear with me. Recipes on my page. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, are you going to put your page, uh, I know we've got it down. Are you going to put it in the chat when you're finished or while you're waiting for someone else to present, perhaps? I, 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 I guess I could conceivably do that, yes. That would be wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> and then um, it calls for a half teaspoon of salt. For those of you that are on, you know, I do it to taste because get this open because I like to grind my salt so um getting figuring out how much is a half teaspoon is a little bit difficult so you know just do it that way. my grandmother and, never measured anything and she uh, made the best cornbread the best everything in the world and I can make cornbread without without measuring anything I did learn that much but I can't Anything else I have to measure? There are just some recipes that you can do that. And now you let that sit for a minute. I'll mix that up eventually, but I won't mix it up till I get my dressing. Um, 
Now the dressing is made from um, a tablespoon of olive oil. So there is my thing. Gotta find the right one here. What was that that Emerald used to do, Peter? These teaspoons or cups? It was, it was, bam, yeah, bam, bam, bam. Yeah, not, not that much. And then it's a teaspoon of honey. And they mm. tell you to make sure that you use a free flowing honey so that you don't make it too sweet. Also, it'll mix in better. Yes, it does. I've noticed yeah. that. Now, if you don't, yeah. you can use molasses, you can use caro syrup, you can use other sweeteners, but they recommend honey. Yeah, and really what you're trying to do, it depends, the exact amount could vary because you don't, you don't know exactly how sweet your fruit's going to be, so. Exactly. Yeah, then and even sugar is fine. Yeah, that's, that's where tasting comes in, and, and you're yeah. right, you can you can take sugar and you can heat it up and make your own honey sure. and syrup. Yeah. It, okay. Sherry, I know we got to cover the rules with Michelle right before we got started. Did we cover the rules with Sharon also? I don't yeah. think we did. No. The little Tupperware in the mail rule that we <laughs> that I keep trying and y'all don't let me <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mail Dial self denial. Down. <laughs> yeah, Niall has to have some of this before the show starts so he can be eating it. Uh, I'm sorry, Niall, but I live in North Carolina, so right on the coast, so just <laughs> whatever boat you have, because I know you've got one to just shoot on the coast, I'll meet you in Wilmington, okay? All right. <laughs> I appreciate that, because uh, I know John's not going to let you ship that out right now. No, no not. He no, not. on it, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can make arrangements to meet you in Myrtle Beach if you'd prefer that one better, because we're about 45 miles from either one, okay? Ooh. Mm. Decisions, decisions. I know. Yeah. And these fruit salsas are, are, are a wonderful summer thing, and you can do it with other fruits other than pineapple. Um, you can grill the yeah. pineapple. You can use mangoes. You can use any, any oh, fruit that you happen to have, you can make a salsa of. The, ba the yeah. rest of the ingredients are basically the same. Yeah, we just had a strawberry festival, and you can use strawberries mixed in with these pineapples. You can. It oh, just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just squeezing a lime into it now. Yeah. The rest, the, the final thing for the dressing after you've got all this in is uh, one to two large uh, limes because you want to make a quarter cup of lime juice. They recommend fresh versus your bottled because it will prevent the pineapple from browning. Now, the fact that I used canned pineapple means I'm not as worried about the browning, but I still want the fresh taste. So I got the fresh slides. Mm -hmm. well, while and you mix, I'm sorry, while you mix that up, Sharon, should we go on to Michelle while you get it ready? It's going to take me two more minutes and then I'm going to be popping the uh, tortillas oh. in the. Okay. I got one more thing to sweep and then I'm whisking and I'm done. Okay. No. This is Sounds make. good. <laughs> yeah and i love making the i love you're making the fresh tortilla chips that's uh i do them in my air fryer but uh that's that's one of my favorite things it, the warm fresh chip is so much better than anything you get out of the bag yes and see once it's all dumped into and, I, and i've used this large bowl for a reason because once i whisk it just a little bit i'm going to do the ultimate cheek Put the lid on it and shake. Put the lid on and shake. <laughs> but yeah, make sure you put the lid on it. I didn't quite put it on all the way last night. I had that. <laughs> it sounds like something I would do. And then you toss and it's mixed. And now you put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. And it recommends that you eat it within two to three days because this is just going to grow stronger the longer it sits. Mm. And if you don't have it in a tight enough, sealed enough container, it will make your refrigerator taste like salsa. Wow. <laughs> uh, I'm not understanding stuff. the problem there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is going to set. I'm going to pop the tortillas into the oven. And if you want to go on to Michelle, 
Uh, it'll be about 10 minutes. Perfect. Uh, eight, 10 minutes while the tortillas bake. And then when we come back, I'll try to have something nice and pretty plated for the. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Sharon. I can't mm -hmm. wait. Okay, Michelle, don't go away. Here. Here. There you are. Yay. <laughs> Michelle has heating my olive oil. Okay. Okay. Are we ready? You're ready. You're on, kid. Oh boy. The first thing you need to do is coat your pork loin, and they usually come in a twin package wherever you get them. You can get them in a single, but they usually come double. And they're approximately a pound a piece. So we just coat it real good with your favorite Dijon mustard. This is so easy. So easy. I like easy. Yes, it's very easy. And then we hopefully that's pop it in a couple of tablespoons of heated olive oil and brown them. Get this side. I don't have very good lighting in this kitchen. So Michelle, you are making a Dijon pork loin. Dijon pork loin. And, and what are you pairing that one with? More than Muse Chardonnay. And that's a terrific choice for the, uh, especially with that mustard glaze, that'll, uh, you need a full bodied wine to take it to, to handle that. And uh, so that'll be a wonderful, wonderful pairing. So I'm gonna turn this up. I'm gonna turn them over to cut time. These, you should brown them pretty good. But we don't have that kind of time. You set your oven to 375. Mm -hmm. Once these are brown, then you put them in a glass baking dish. And put them in an oven. For 20 minutes. So in the meantime, you have your pan here and it's still hot. You add to the pan, depending on, these were huge green onions. So I'm only adding two green onions. Michelle, what's the temperature on your oven? 375. And we add about a half a tablespoon of garlic, crushed garlic. So I would say maybe two cloves. I don't mess with cloves. I buy it already crushed. It's easier. I use enough of it. You know, after you get everything on, Michelle, we're going to want you to put your um, put your link to your page with the recipe on the chat for us. Would you do that, please? I did, didn't I? Did you already? Oh, I'm yep. sorry. I think I did. I apologize. Awesome. So we, this, once it's browned, you'll have a lot more drippings in here from the from the brown meat but we're just going to brown it and you brown this till the onions are are uh tender and you keep whisking it because you don't want your your garlic to burn because that makes things bitter if you get too much burn on your garlic so we're almost done here it only takes a few minutes So now we add one full cup 
of the Chardonnay. And then we add one full cup of heavy cream. So we're making health food here. Yep. <laughs> And then another tablespoon of your Dijon. And I don't measure either, so. <laughs> Bam. And we whisk that together and you'd make sure that you get all of your, your uh, bits off the bottom. Oh yeah, that's where all the flavor is. Yep. Salt and pepper. Can't forget your salt and pepper. That brings out everything. Are you using regular salt or sea salt there? Sea salt. That's, that's so, okay. I always use sea salt. I don't, well, I do have regular salt, but 90% of the time I use sea salt. <laughs> and we bring this to a boil, and then you simmer it till it reduces to about half and it'll thicken right up for you and it'll cook that alcohol out so you're just left uh. with, with the flavor <laughs> and if you when you taste it if you can if you get the alcohol taste you did not cook it long enough that's the way that goes i get it i get it it sure sounds like alcohol abuse to me but i get it <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna cook that down to like the texture of a uh, hollandaise sauce or something this is the one i did earlier today mm. and it is it will coat a spoon of course this is not as it's cold it's cold but it'll coat a spoon it'll when you put a spoon in it it'll come out coated that's when you know it's it's ready. I, yeah, I did this one. This is a double batch because my grandson is crazy about it. So that's that. After 20 minutes, you turn the pork loin over and cook it another 20 minutes. And then you bring it out. And due to modern technology, He's got a magic oven. Ta-da! We got some done. <laughs> now, are you? Do you dip and yeah. put the uh, sauce over it? Is that how you do it? You, what you do is let it rest for a little bit, for uh, five minutes or so. It never usually makes it this far in my house. <laughs> it, it's from here, but. Then you take your pork loin. You got lucky this time. <laughs> My grandson said I got lucky this time. Well, we appreciate you, grandson. <laughs> <laughs> and you take it and you slice it at a diagonal. Mm. And these are buttered parsley noodles what I usually serve it with those or rice or yeah I gotta have something to enjoy all that great sauce with. yeah I like the noodles mm -hmm. the more carbs the better <laughs> <laughs> what kind of noodles would you use Sherry uh well, I, any kind, actually. No, she said something about little short ones. I don't know what you call them. What you? I think she had egg. I think those look like egg noodles. <laughs> egg noodles. Oh yeah. 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 With some parsley These and butter. Are butter parsley egg noodles. Ooh, yeah. That sounds delicious. Yeah, great choice. Mm-hmm. I'm impressed. My favorite. <laughs> you have to excuse me. I have a cold. And I can't stop coughing. We, oh, we that's... excuse you, especially if you share some of that. <coughs> well, we yeah. have this—we have this great cough syrup uh, that, that's in the bottle you have nearby. 
<laughs> yeah, you know. We have, and we have flavors for everybody's taste. <laughs> <coughs> well, see, she's been slaving over a hot stove for all of us. So. Uh -huh. Very and that right. temperature change is probably causing that. Yep. Yep. Okay, so we have that. And then I cheat and do these in the microwave. Too much butter. Nope. I'll drink to that. <laughs> now you take your sauce. That I should warm that up. Did you have asparagus in there? Am I saying yep. right? Yep. Oh, I love it. Oh, what a great combo. Yeah, it was microwave. I'm definitely going to put this in a different bowl. Or you could have just tossed it in the oven real quick. Well, it's China. I don't know. Hey, Michelle, you might as well just go ahead and have a bite and have a sip of wine and, and compare. I mean, share yes. the taste. Because as soon as you hand that to that cameraman, he's gone. <laughs> taste it now while you can. Yes, you have to taste it while you can. You have to get a dip. Mm. And a glass one. Got a Chardonnay with that. Oh my goodness. Mm. Well, I a Chardonnay. I always drink the wine that I put in here. So and that's perfect. That's what I did. Let me pour it in here. Pour it on the meat. And there you have it. Wow. Should take a picture of that beautiful plate for your page. Yeah. No, but I will. <laughs> and take a picture before the cameraman gets a hold of that plate. Yes, yes. Yeah. Get between him and the camera. I, I don't know how he's holding himself back this long. It's uh <laughs> He didn't. He was into this earlier. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, okay, that's all. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll send it to you. Just hold it up. <laughs> Good job. Here, hold the plate right. up. Hold the plate up. I'll take a huh. picture for your page. Picture for my page. Okay. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Just lovely. Bye. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. So that is Dijon pork loin. Very simple and impressive. So you can have company over and they think you slaved all day yeah yeah and you did. <laughs> awesome yeah so i'm finished so i'm done 20 minutes plus 20 minutes you got 40 minutes done wow. <laughs> look at that <laughs> the sauce is still cooking i'm still i still have pork loin in there but you know oh that's take, take a bite take a bite with your wine take a bite with your wine michelle okay I would tell us how good it is. You know, you're lucky she said something. <laughs> you're really lucky. Did you hear that? I heard you, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Usually when I make this, like I said, it doesn't make it to the platter. <laughs> and he yeah. said, well, you guys get what you want. And then he has the rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember those teenage boy years. Uh-huh. You can consume a lot of food. And if you want, you know, you sometimes you can sprinkle some more green onion on top of it to make it pretty. Whatever. I'm Go sure. ahead, Karen. I'm sure it's delicious. It's really good. <laughs> and the cameraman saying, okay, my turn. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Jackson. That's yeah. a little That's me, everybody. <laughs>
Hello. Thank you, Michelle. Sharon, are you ready to do something or shall we go on to Kathy and then come back to you? The, this is what the chips look like. This is if you like them toasted a lot. Ooh, yummy. This is if you like them only toasted a little. Oh, all right. Okay, and now I am done for the portion of the evening. Thank you. And I'm going to go try to post the recipe in the chat. <laughs> okay, wonderful. And and now, you, you, can send, you can send your leftovers here. <laughs> can you uh, show your Pinot Grigio bottle? I did that earlier, but here it is again. It almost did. Remind everyone. Yeah, so. We're the chips and sauces really good together. Now, what, uh, there's, John? there's John and the other handsome young man. It looks like he's drinking the uh, Pinot Grigio. So, how does that go with her salsa? What, what are you tasting in your mouth? I like it. I like it a lot. It really complements it well. Really, really does. Does really it make like any it. specific part of the salsa stand out more than the other? Yeah, I think uh, for me personally, the pineapple stands out the most because it kind of gives that extra fresh taste. So I really yeah. do like it. That's what yep, yep, yep. Good yeah. job. Awesome. Excellent. <clears throat> okay. Well, thank you very much, Sharon. You did a wonderful job. And Kathy, are you ready to bring it home? I am ready. And All right. Luckily, guys, I don't have much to do. Mine's <laughs> <laughs> done. Because, like I said, it would take three hours for this show if I started from scratch. But only because the cake had to had to be in the refrigerator for two hours. So. Ah, okay. You know me, I do easy. So oh, I love easy. Easy is my favorite. I was going to do a cake from scratch. And I said, nah, ain't going to happen. I had too much to do today. <laughs> so I did a box cake mix. You just do it to the instructions for whatever size pan that you have. And you're done. Okay. The cake. When you take it out of the oven, you have to do this while it's hot. While it's cooking, you cut up a pint of strawberries. And I am so blessed because 20 minutes for me is a strawberry farm. Oh. I go in the mornings and get there early and I get the berries that are just picked from the field. Mm. The whole month of May and half of June, I have fresh strawberries here all oh. the time. And then in August, we have a peach orchard that's close by, and we have <clears> peaches all through August and the first part of September. Chad wow. is a place to live, guys. I'm telling you. It sounds uh, like it. It's wonderful. Anyway, Could we just discuss, discuss swapping some oranges and some peaches and strawberries through yeah, the mail? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's an idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we'll talk now. <laughs> Beat you to it, Sharp. We'll negotiate. Uh, but listen, I'm, it's uh, what you take the strawberries, you slice them up, and then you mash them really good. And you want to mash them till they're just mush and juice because it, you want it to go down into the cake. You then pour in a can of something that makes everything good. Eagle Brand. Mm. I mean, you know, come on. The Eagle Brand makes everything good. Yep. You mix it together. When the cake comes out, you take something and poke holes in it. Now, I poked a lot of holes with the biggest thing I had, <laughs> bigger than my finger. Um, and I poked holes, and then when I poured everything over, it didn't look like it was sinking down enough. So I just took my big spoon and kind of just dug down in there and pushed the strawberries in it because I wanted it to be down in the cake. So now it's been in the refrigerator for two hours. And we're going to finish it off. If, now I don't know if you can see me or not, so hang on a minute. Let's see if we can. I can. Ah, uh, there we go. Can you no, see? We were there. There oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. yum. Yum, yum. Okay. We're going to break out the good old homemade whipped cream in a can. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Oh, and I will say, if you do strawberries, I've learned this tip from the people at the farm. They said... Uh, I love the fact that you learn how to put your whipped cream in a can. It looks just like the, the professionals do. Well, that's the attention to detail we really appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, when you bring your strawberries home, pull the little leafy caps off. Don't pull the core out. But just wash them and pull that off and put them in jars in your refrigerator 
and they <coughs> don't have last year. Okay. I really and I'll have... give you a tip to I'll give you a tip to cleaning the strawberries, getting the core in the out. You take a straw, push it in one end, it puts the whole puts the core in the and the green leafy bit out in one shot. Oh really? That's why they call that's why they're called strawberries. Wow. <laughs> You're so good, Peter. <laughs> and, and Peter, we used to do that with plastic straws, and now they actually make metal straws, make it all even easier. Now that'll do it. Oh, yum. That Isn't looks pretty? wonderful. Mm. Okay, now we must have the tasting. Yes, hang on. I'll well, that I'm dying to see what it looks like inside. But oh. yeah, I'll see, I see it again. Attention to detail. Yeah. It's got to be a pretty plate. Got to be yep. pretty. Yep. Um, oh, you're making me very jealous of the strawberries. I just can't get them. I, I'm afraid that I would slice them. Fresh <laughs> picked. They're so sweet and juicy. They don't even need sugar. No. no. Um, gosh, they're good. I want some. Yeah. I'm a fruit nut anyway. I love fresh fruit. And the peaches that we get in August, they are like softballs. And <laughs> Joel said, if beautiful, but. If you bite into one, the juice just runs down your chin. I mean, they're unbelievable. Joel Hooper just said it looks delicious, but not just just a little shy on the uh, whipped cream. Needs a little more. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> I haven't used one of those cans in a long time. <laughs> oh boy! Now we can find out whether it holds together or not. This is going to be a test. And yeah, I just don't know how you're going to get that in the mail, so I'm going to have to drive up there, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I'll I'll I've got a bedroom for you. Can you pick me up on the way now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, i got room for both of you. That looks like enough um, cake right there to, to have two bottles of rosé. I know, right? Oh, it's falling apart. Well, we may not have a pretty picture of a piece. I told you I was worried about sticking my spoon in there. I always end up making it looks I've beautiful never tried before awesome. I'm here. What's important is how it tastes. Yeah. And I'd okay. be shocked if it wasn't just Oh, my delicious. gosh. It looks like myself and Peter and Michelle's grandson are the ones closest to your screen. So I'm going to give you a man's perspective. We don't need it to be pretty, but I know that's going to taste good. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I can't wait. Okay. It's not going to stay on the plate long enough to be pretty. Mm. <laughs> nope. <laughs> What are you having oh, with it, Kathy? What wine are you having? Oh, man. The Tanya Rosé. And it brings out the strawberries. I mean, oh. even more. This this Rosé is like dessert by itself. I mean, it's like candy in a glass. It is so good. I'm afraid my, my <laughs> son's girlfriend and myself have just about done this bottle in. But uh, Are you convinced, Niall? That's what he's drinking. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Delicious. I tell you, I've never been a rosé drinker, Peter. I'm not a, you know, summertime sipping or dessert uh, wine kind of guy. But I think maybe four or five bottles ago, the first one I opened of this. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it was absolutely positively delicious. Yeah, we've had a lot of demand for it. In fact, the, right now we're completely out of it in the warehouse, but... Um, oh, no. But no, don't worry. I we we were sitting, we were at our uh, bottling facility on Monday, and we we ordered more of it, so there should be more in in a matter of days. Oh, thank goodness, because I'm down to about six or seven bottles, killing me. What yeah. Do you think of, yeah. What do you I think of the pairing? I opened my last bottle for this, so Peter, I need you to sneak one in my box, please. Oh, <laughs> it'll, 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 it'll be it, by the. Probably next week it should be back for custom cases. So. Oh wow! Awesome. Just in time for summer. What do you yep. think of what do you think of the pairing? I love it. It is, uh, and I just said I did the strawberries that didn't make it on the cake. I put in my glass of wine. <laughs> Beautiful. Isn't that pretty? Yes, it is. Mm. Yeah. Very creative. I'm telling you, nice. this cake is a hit. I'll have to make that again. And yeah, not chop it up so much, maybe, <laughs> but it might actually stick together. But it is good and easy and quick, except for the two hours chilling time. Yeah, you got the in the two hours it'll probably soak in if you didn't get if you it, in that on its own. You wouldn't have to have uh, 
beat the hell out of it. Yeah. <laughs> but on the other hand, you get your frustrations out on the cake that way. It was so much fun. I was just like, <laughs> so you noticed we have three different wines tonight. Sherry, you were talking about that. And yes. well, they are three different. There's a theme here. And and it's a theme is um uh she's not here tonight, but we really we almost need a second toast to our uh to the most uh passionate wine uh, connoisseur in our group, our uh, our compliance officer, Tanya Rickard, who is you see two of the wines are named after him after her, but uh, you may notice that may look a little like somebody we know. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. we have a Tanya themed <laughs> evening here. So you're saying uh, that the uh, the Chard the the uh, more than Muse Chardonnay brunette is what? Well, I don't know. It's not officially that, but you know who who created it and his favorite. You know who his favorite brunette is. So yeah, mm -hmm. like her. Here's Titania. Here's Titania. Here's Titania. Cheers. Cheers. But, so uh, I don't know about all of you, but. I don't I can't think of anywhere else on the planet, Sherry, where we could enjoy a dinner party with how many people's on here? 123 people at our dinner party, Shark. Where else can we have a dinner party with 123 people attending and have fun and learn about wine and learn about food pairing? And you know, Peter writes great tasting notes for us all the time, right? And we can get that in our back office. But we get on here. And we see so much experimentation. People are trying different things, Peter. You're giving them the basic knowledge with the tasting notes. And that basic knowledge of the number one or the number, you know, one and two, food that pairs with that gives them more ideas. And that's what I love about this show. I've seen yeah. I've seen great wines paired with hamburgers and hot dogs and a slice of pizza and, and you know. Uh, prime rib and flaming and young and, and so many different things. It's just um, it's amazing um, how much how much we get to learn here and how much we get to understand about wine and food pairing that all the taste buds in our mouth. Yeah, and and this is particularly a time of year. Um, as I mentioned, I was just in Napa on Monday, and the reason that is, as you mentioned, it's time to uh, it's time to pick to taste the wine, see what's good, see what's ready to go. And we got some amazing, amazing things. Um, we have some some great rosés coming for this summer, and uh, and we have a few surprises, some things we've never sent to you before. So, um, wow. not going to tell you what, but you, you'll, you'll, this summer is, is going to be is going to be a few surprises for you. Um, but uh, Cherry, why don't you tell everyone? We we we're sort of going around the subject. Why don't you tell everyone a little about Wine Ambassador? Okay, I will. We have a wine club here, Wine of the Month Club, and it's the best. It's the best of the best. It's fine wine from only Sonoma and Napa Valley, California, and I'm here to say it can compete with any wine in the world and come on top, uh, even France, which is one of my favorites. And it is, um, anyway, we have, it's like a discovery club in a way because we have everything. We have red wine, we have white wine, we have rosé, as Peter and Nile were talking about, Nile's drinking and Kathy's drinking. We have a uh, sparkling wine. We have it all. And you never know what's going to show up at your door unless you specify, you know, all white or all red. You don't know what you're going to get that month, but whatever you get, it's going to be delicious. And it's fresh to your door from the vineyards. This is not mass produced. This this is not, um, it doesn't have those extra, what are they? Not, not sulfites and preservatives. Sulfites, yeah. the extra, so it has some natural sulfites in it, okay? But they're, they don't put more in it like they do when they mass produce wine. And this is the real deal. And it comes right to your door every month like magic. And you know, I don't know where else you can do that. And Sherry, yeah. is there is there a way to get this free every month for, for those who are seated for the first time? They had me at three and free. Okay, here we go. Uh, if you, whether you are a customer or you decide to go into the wine business with some of us, you can, um, if you sign up three people as customers, your monthly wine is free. 
you don't pay for it anymore. And not just for that month, for as long as you have three people signed up under you in the club, you only pay shipping and taxes. That's all you're going to pay. Your wine is free and it's incredible wine. Now, I lived in Germany back in, oh, I won't say the decade because that's going to tell my age. Uh, but anyway, I uh, lived in there. Maybe the 2000s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Three, three or four uh, years. And so I got to have a lot of uh, different wines because, you know, going from country to country over there is like going from state to state over here. So while I was there and we had a wine club, I worked at the time. Uh, my my husband, my ex-husband was uh, military. That's what we were doing there. And I worked for the Corps of Engineers. So a group of us decided that we were going to have a wine club. And we had uh, one of the events at our house or apartment, I should say. And we had a different wine or a special wine for each course like we did tonight. And it was just, oh, it was so much fun. And you don't have to do that. You can have the same wine with, with everything and plan it that way. But if you want to, you can be even more, um, uh, I guess, adventurous and try what we did tonight. And it really, really works out well. Uh, so I appreciate all our cooks tonight. And by the way, if you're new here, just go back to the person that invited you and join us. I mean, three and free. Uh, I, they had me then, but anyway, I would still be here because it is an awesome place, and uh, we have awesome wine, very affordable for members, and you can also um, get in the business if you want. There's three different levels, and you can join as an estate member, a reserve member, or a grand crew member, which is the cream de la cream sort of. <laughs> but you can join at any any one of those levels. And Peter, you want to tell them a little bit about the the Grand Crew because I know you are a Grand Crew. Oh yeah, the Grand well, yeah. the Grand Crew is um, um, yeah, the Grand Crew is our highest level of wine, and it comes with a special selection of six six bottles that our normal wines are terrific, but these bring you into a completely different stratosphere. These are wines that can compete with the be absolute best wines in the world that you would spend more for the bottle than you get the entire beautiful wood box of these wines. And it's not just the wines. It's also, there's other benefits you get from these levels. The Grand Cru members get 20% off all their future purchases. So if you want more of a wine you get some month, they pay 20% less than, than everyone else. Um, if you, and plus there's our harvest event. In, um, in September at Labor Day weekend, our Grand Crew members get to come to, uh, or have the opportunity to come to our vineyard in, in Napa, where we're gonna serve out some, serve some really amazing food paired with the, uh, some of the newest wines we have. Um, wines that we'll probably be releasing right there. Um, and, it's just a one of a kind event. Any anyway, everybody who was there last year, I think, is going to make it again. And so, you got to get in quick. To, we're going to be putting the tickets on sale for that in the next couple of days. Um, so that's a, that's one of the terrific fun things we do for our members. Another is coming up even sooner in June. Our um, our top leaders who's earned enough points can um, earn our earn whatever our leadership retreat trip of the year is. And this year. It's Waikiki. So um, our top people will be there and we're going to be giving you a lot of education on, on, um, on marketing, on a lot of different things. Plus, we're going to be doing some wine education. We're going to be doing some fun tasting and, uh, and events there with that. And, well, you get to spend the week in Waikiki. So um, next year is going to be somewhere different. And I can't tell you where. I, I can repeat what... Um, what Rory likes to tease everyone is get your passports. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, that's they, these are the, some of the fun things we we like. I mean, we we have a lot of fun doing this because it's, how can you not with wine like this? But and we enjoy the people we're with. Um, that's why we get together every week to have a little fun with each other. And it's fun to watch these. You talked about the tasting notes and the and the discovery. 
look, I didn't have to tell any of these ladies what to pair it with. They knew exactly what and why, thanks to coming here every week and knowing what we do and reading my tasting notes. So I, it's it's really exciting to see how every how everybody's wine knowledge has uh, grown over as they as they join the club and learn more so a lot of exciting things more more exciting things coming up and surprises that i that i have in store for you that we cooked up in the last couple days so um <laughs> <laughs> yes yep thank you Peter. and i gotta tell you i i can't think of um we say some of the best wines come out of napa california but the wines that you selected are probably some of the best wines in the entire planet. And even uh, sure. even up there where Elon Musk is trying to colonize, he ain't never going to have anything this good. But <laughs> to be able to have the ability to easily share this with uh, one, two, or three other people and get that wine free every single month, Peter, that this it's like it's like a gift to mankind, the way, the, the way you guys de de design the entire compensation plan. It's it, just... Yep, uh, yep. I yeah. mean, it's all, yeah, we get to do it. <laughs> we, get we get to do it. it. <laughs> That's right. And like I said, if you're new tonight, just get with a person that told you about us and join and share this incredible um, wine and, and or business with us. We have a lot of fun. We have quality wine and we get to do it. So. We get to do it, Sherry. Good job. You said it exactly yeah, we right. We get to do great, it. Yep, and we get to have great leaders like Sherry come on and uh, and and share with us every week. So. Every week, and, and I got to yep. tell you, Peter, um, the three pairings tonight for acidity and pH and everything outside of just the taste that those were three fabulous pairings, actually. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm blown away. I'm, I I want to make everything we saw tonight, and, I, and I'm ready to start chilling those wines. Yeah, and the so, wine the wine pairing with that food was absolutely spot on, perfect. Yeah, I I I I, I um I saw the recipe for the pork, and I pulled I uh, picked up a, some at the supermarket today, so that's what I'm going to be having for dinner. Deal. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I guess we're about to wrap it up, huh? I think so. That's it for this week. See you all next Wednesday. Thank you all. Thank you, Kathy and Michelle and Sharon so much for sharing with us and Peter and Niall for joining us and we'll see you next time. Uh, no, thank you, Sherry. Thanks for putting that team thank together. You know. it was, it was, this was great. Glad you enjoyed it. It was. It was. Awesome. Good, night. Good job.